Hey there, guys, and welcome to the Barbells and BJJ podcast with your host, Mr. George Cresswell. And today we're coming to you with the new setup. And boy, am I loving it. Oh boy, has it been fun and amazing to finally get this up and running. If you haven't listened to some of the previous podcast episodes that I've done, or mainly one of the podcast episodes that I've done, I think it was about two episodes ago. I mentioned that uh, I was having some difficulties getting things like the microphones and everything up and running. There's a lot of technical difficulties and other uh, labor intensive difficulties that have gone to this point and they're still ongoing. We're still clearing out the room and everything like that. But at least finally, the technical difficulties have seemed to be resolved, at least for now. I know saying that it's going to um, probably cause the uh, techno... Uh, technological difficulties to skyrocket again but fingers crossed fingers crossed they won't and we can bring you guys a very very high quality uh production hopefully especially in the audio department which i think if you're going to be listening to this for you know 10 20 30 minutes or more maybe in the future the audio quality is very very important i think so yeah hopefully we can bring you guys very very high uh quality audio production obviously with the video as well but with all that said that's a minute and a half gone of me just going on about uh other things rather than what we're going to be talking a little bit about today we're not going to be spending too long talking about it it could be an hour long podcast or an hour long conversation in and of itself really but we're going to keep it nice and basic this idea that i see a lot of people fitness influencers and people who you know, wannabe influencers and, you know, maybe you should consider whether they should be in the space. Um, this idea of intuitive eating, intuitive eating, just meaning that basically you eat on your intuition. You eat when you feel like it, you just eat what you want. You don't really pay too much rigorous attention to what you eat, how much you're eating, when you're eating. You don't track meticulously or anything like that. You just, you, you know, you, you just go off your instinct. Um, and I think there's a couple of inherent problems with this that we're going to be going into today. Particularly, the first one being is that if you look at the trends in obesity we've had, you know, over the last many years in, in the, the um, longitudinal analysis studies and just on the data from the government studies, uh, government statistics, sorry, for example, currently around two thirds of adults, and this is in the, in the UK or sorry, in England, I'm reading it off my laptop as well. This is in England, sorry, just England. Two thirds of them are above a healthy weight and half of these are living with obesity. Now, just going on that, there's one big inherent problem there is that this intuitive eating approach if somebody doesn't have the knowledge behind it, the background knowledge, which typically comes from what we're going to be going through in a little bit, which is meticulous tracking of how many calories are in their portion sizes that they're eating, um, you know, what uh, other calorie amounts of certain food relative to others, what role the nutrients play, you know, protein, carbohydrates, fats, alcohol, alcohol is a nutrient in itself. If you didn't know, there's many, many, many things that need to be put in place for an intuitive eating approach to be effective. Uh, and the, the cold truth is, is that most people don't have that knowledge. If most people had that knowledge, we probably wouldn't be seeing these obesity statistics. Now, is the problem of obesity just down to people eating intuitively? No, absolutely not. It is a very um, wide issue. You know, you've got the areas of genetics where uh, obese people tend to have greater uh, levels of hunger hormones, greater circulating levels of hunger hormones, such as leptin. Uh, not leptin, ghrelin, sorry. What the hell am I saying? Ghrelin, sorry. Leptin is the satiety hormone, if you didn't know. Sorry, I meant ghrelin. Ghrelin, like a, like a little gremlin that makes you feel hungry all the time. But have higher circulating levels of hormones, uh, which promote hunger. They get a greater reward um, in terms of the dopamine response from eating food. There's things like that that obviously play into it as well. Physical activity and sedentary behavior, all of these things play a role. But also this idea, as I said, that is perpetuated by a lot of people that you can just eat intuitively. 
And for the vast majority of people, this isn't going to be an approach that works. Because if you think about it, it's the approach that has gotten them to this point in the first place. And if you keep doing what you've already done, or you keep doing the same thing and expect a different result, well, that's typically termed the definition of insanity. And it's the exact same thing here. If you keep eating this way, you're probably going to get the same result. So, what can we do? Well, like I said, intuitive eating can be something that works. However, you need a lot of background knowledge to make it work. And that's something that the vast majority of people don't have. Simply because they, they either they haven't been made aware of how to do it, how to attain it, or they simply just haven't done it. One of the ways that you can do this, and this would be the way I'm actually writing about this at the moment in a, um, in a guide that I'm writing, is you need to spend a certain amount of time tracking everything that goes in to your diet over what I would call a moderate period of time, which is roughly about seven days is what I would recommend. Uh, you do this to get a current average of your energy intake, for example, which is going to be very, very useful for if somebody is either looking to lose weight for their health, or again, you might be looking to lose body fat because you simply want to appear leaner and more muscular, and it's a goal-orientated um, body composition change. That's absolutely fine as well. But you can use this method to get a very, very in-depth knowledge of your nutrition by basically doing a case study on yourself. And I recommend obviously tracking for much longer periods of time. If you just want to work out your initial average energy intake, if you are at a rough caloric maintenance right now, you track everything you eat over, over seven days. I mean, this is everything. You, you know, the, the condiments that you use, the milk in your tea, the sugars, you know, the things that you have from coffee chains, frappes and, and all stuff like that, your pumpkin spice latte, whatever. You make sure you meticulously track everything and then you divide it by the amount of days that you track for. I recommend a week because it takes into account the weekends as well, which can very, very easily skew the averages. And this is something which I've got in that guide as well, can very, very easily skew the averages. So you think you're intaking less than what you actually are across a certain period of time. That's why this number or this measurement has to be indicative of your habitual energy intake. And that's why I recommend over a week. So typically you go Monday to Monday, everything resets and repeats on a Monday. So you just do, do the seven days. Obviously you can do less, but bear in mind, the more days you do, the more accurate it's going to be. But again, people that don't have this knowledge and can just look at a plate of food and be like, okay, there's X amount of protein in there. There's X amount of calories because there looks like there's approximately this amount of potato. There's these veggies. Oh, they, they didn't cut the that they didn't trim the fat off the steak. So maybe that's going to add this or not. Unless you can do these calculations in your head, unless you're John von Neumann, who can, you know, multiply 10 digit numbers in his head, then maybe your estimation isn't going to be that accurate of an estimation. And that's a problem. And there's many, many studies that show that underreporting energy intake is a, is a serious problem, even when, you, even when you track, even when you track people under report calories sometimes as high as 20 percent but it's going to be better once you have a good idea of what is in your food how many calories you're intaking on a daily basis through this meticulous and rigorous tracking process then you can more accurately use this intuitive eating approach because in order for intuitive eating to work you need to have good habits and what obesity trends are showing us is that most people don't have good habits. Again, it's a very, very multifaceted issue, but this is one of them. And this is one of them that people have control over, which is very, very important. You need to focus on things that you can control, not things that you can't. So yeah, that's one of my big gripes when I see this being promoted just to the average person. And again, I think it comes from this thing which I've been guilty of um, to a certain extent is this thing where it's called an expertise bias. I was made aware of this by one of my very, very good friends 
uh, who I look up to as a mentor. And it's this, uh, this phenomenon of expertise bias where we can easily think that everybody else is on the same level of knowledge and experience that we are. And that you may be at the point where you can use an intuitive approach because you've built up these good habits and you have this greater knowledge base to make it work. But that doesn't mean that your followers are going to have that. It doesn't mean that the average person who's sitting at about 35% body fat knows the, you know, the nutrient values of food, knows that carbohydrates are four, uh, four calories per gram, that protein has four calories per gram, and that the TEF values or the TEF percent, the thermic effect of food percent is different between these two nutrients. And you see the point? Most people aren't going to know that. And so this approach probably isn't going to work for most people. If you think about it, for most people, it's going to be the thing that got them to this problem in the first place. So we need to think of other things that we can do. And as I said, tracking, I think, is a very, very important one. Tracking accurately, a weighed food diary, is it perfect? No. But in my opinion, it's one of the best things that you can do. Meticulously track initially for that seven-day period, but then you track over long periods of time. You keep tracking because you want to build it up as a habit. You want to keep building up this knowledge of what you're intaking on a daily basis in terms of your energy intake over long periods of time. You have to do that in order for your estimations to then become in any way accurate. So yeah, that's my little gripe with intuitive eating, guys. If you found it useful, again, please leave your thoughts down below in the Q&A down below or again on my social medias and anything like that, please do. I'm always open to feedback. Hope you found it useful. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a great day. I hope you go and train hard. And I will catch you soon. Out.